Hello, this is Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management, bringing you an important update about the economy and the investment markets. Well, we're firmly into the last quarter of the year. Equity markets have come off their overall bottom. And one of the things I want to talk about is technical indicators that we use. While it's not a guarantee, what we look at technical indicators for, for really sell-offs and buy opportunities. And when we look at technical indicators and we combine that with fundamentals, fundamentals are really kind of under the hood, which is, you know, the engine parts and all that, what's really driving the business or the economy. Tacticals are more kind of the look of the car, let's say. What is, how does the car look um, versus overall fundamental outlook that's under the engine, things really maybe you don't see as closely. So on the tactical side, when we use charting, we use overbought conditions or oversold conditions, it appears that a lot of the things we talked about at the beginning of the year, things like inflation that is clearly rolling over on the leading indicators in a big way. The unemployment scenario and employment scenario is definitely rolling over on a, in a, a positive way to bring down inflation. Housing, which is 40% of CPI, has really cratered this year and in our opinion will continue to go down next year in value and you're even seeing rents starting to abate with year over year change really on some areas of the market actually going down. So inflation as I've talked should be abating is abating and we should see definitely significantly better numbers on the inflation front in 2023. And realistically, we could potentially see deflation, which isn't positive. So it really depends on how much more the Fed raises rates. Do they back off? Do they pause and wait to see how the overall economy kind of brings down inflation? So we have that new ramp back up on the upside. Again, I talk about volatility. Volatility is normal. Statistically, every five years, we get about a 20% pullback statistically, in all asset categories, not just the stock market, but the bond market, real estate, gold, all those different areas. If you look at every single year, we at least get one 10% pullback in most sectors in addition. So again, these are normal things, nobody likes it. Six steps up, two steps back. If I look at the last five years, we've gone up six or seven steps, and we've come back two steps in the last, let's say, nine months. That's not bad, and that is normal. If I look at the next three to five years, I see a rosy picture for growth of the U.S. economy. Not so much in Europe, but we're not invested there. We are at the point now in our portfolios, especially on the bond side, we're looking to start increasing allocation to longer maturity type bonds for higher uh, interest or dividend payment. And because ultimately what we see coming is really interest rates staying flat where the Fed, where the Fed is not going to raise rates more uh, as we get into 2023. And then potentially if we start to really see a real slowdown or deflation where the Fed starts reducing interest rates, which will give us capital appreciation. So remember, all investments uh, run in cycles, uh, includes bonds and real estate. I talked earlier about real estate. Remember, your house value jumped up a lot the last two and a half years. Anything that goes straight up like this is going to come pretty much straight down. Not to the levels you were at two and a half years ago, but you'll probably give up 50, 40, 50% of the gain that you saw in your house value because it just went up too fast. People can't afford that. That's what we saw back in the 2007, eight real estate boom and bust. Three years before that, real estate values went straight up. A lot of homes went up 100%, 120%, only to basically drop easily 50% in value over the next following years, leveled off still at a higher price point than, let's say, the five years before that, and then started inching back up. That's what we see in the real estate market, but I see more values coming down in the real estate market through 2023. And until the Fed really stops raising rates and starts reducing rates, real estate values, generally speaking, will probably come down another five or 15% in the year of 2023. If I look at things like the used car market, which was really just taken advantage of by all the stimulus money from COVID from 20, uh, 2020 to really 2022, used car prices skyrocketed up. Guess what's happening? That chart that went straight up on used car prices is now coming straight down. What we see is this, as we get into the second half of next year, there's gonna be a flood of used cars for sale at discount prices, probably half of what the value is or was at the beginning of 2022, half. 
Uh, if I look at new car prices, I think people are going to get great deals in the second half of 2023 and the three years following because inventory is coming back. Car sales have actually slowed down quite a bit. So you'll be able to get better deals on cars in midpoint 2023 and the three years following. Again, the market was over flooded with car sales. And by the way, if I look at cars that were purchased in the last two to three years because of this free stimulus money, one of the interesting facts is most people never made a car payment because they were delayed because of COVID, if a lot of you remember that like they did student loans. So a lot of people that bought these inflated car prices, that a car that was worth normally 10,000, they paid 14,000 for, that car now is only worth, let's say six or 8,000. They owe substantially more than it's worth. A lot of these cars are gonna go back to the banks, which is basically then gonna go into auction, which are gonna be sold at discount prices. And the same thing, that's gonna ultimately drag down new car prices in addition. So if you're in the market for a new car, I would suggest you wait till midpoint next year. You'll probably get yourself a better deal, not only on used cars, but also on uh, used cars in addition. As always, we expect the economy to, to really pick up some steam. And over the next three years, we expect greener pastures. But if you're concerned at all, about your portfolio or you have general questions about your portfolio, please give the office a call. We are always here to really make sure we answer your questions and keep you uh, comfortable really what's going on. You're not in this for this year, you're in it for the long haul. So again, whether you're 70, 85, or you're 25, you're a long-term investor because remember, you're not gonna spend all your money in the next three years. You're gonna spend a small piece of it for income each year. So the majority of your money will be here three years from now, five years from now and 10 years from now. And we firmly believe valuations and value of those portfolios will have a great opportunity the next three to five years. Have a safe and profitable day.